Okay. Um, so thank you, Barakuda, for uh, giving me this opportunity um, to present some of this work. So at IFPN, we use uh, Barracuda for a lot of uh, technology development uh, works. And uh, so we, we chose uh, with my colleague Benjamin this particular work because, of course, it's of interest in my uh, recent work for chemical, uh, chemical looping combustion but also because um, uh, it, it, we, we will question some, uh, some parts that the Barracuda is not used, especially for Geldart B particles. Okay, so as is, uh, the title, this is a comparison of CFT models in predicting the fluidization behavior of uh, Geldart B particles. Uh, I will focus mostly on uh, Barracuda. Okay, um, so this is the presentation outlined. I will start with the uh, introduction. So. Why we are interested in uh, 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 simulating slugging is that because we do not want uh, slugging in our uh, unit to happen. So, <coughs> uh, so here I'm just show very uh, a result of my uh, PhD pro uh, project that superficial gas velocity is increasing in a sand particle uh, fluidized bed, and uh, we were having these big bubbles inside the the unit. It was a six inch uh, the c column that uh, produced very f special uh, behavior. And this is actually something that we would like to avoid, especially for laboratory and pilot uh, scale, because then we will have hydrodynamics that are not representative of, of what we will have on the commercial scale. And so the, uh, the cold flow model or the pilot, hot pilot that we will do has hydrodynamics that are not representative, and that can actually impact also the, the performance of the unit. So, that's really important, and uh, we would like to design our uh, research uh, uh, experiments in order to avoid this kind of uh, behavior. Um, for example, here I'm just showing the w one result that we are having in the IFPN with the slugging, and uh, actually the pressure fluctuations were really high that we could not actually continue because of the rupture of the, the, of the safety disk. Um, of course, uh, it's, it's good for the research, but it's also uh, something uh, good for uh, testing, sorry, uh, testing the capability of uh, CFT models in, the, in the detecting conditions that usually are not, not observed. Um, so Dr. Grace gave uh, the necessary conditions for slugging. So the average bubble diameter should be big enough uh, compared to the diameter of the column. Uh, the superficial gas velocity should be um, higher than the minimum slugging velocity, and these are uh, some of the, uh, I mean, references about this. We should be lower than the superficial gas velocity of the transition to turbulent regime, and the bed should be sufficiently deep, and the criteria are given in this um, uh, reference. <coughs> so just uh, to show two th different types of slugging that we have, I'm not sure if, uh, Everybody is familiar with, but the one that uh, most of the people talk about is the round-nosed uh, slugging, and uh, you can see the big, big bubbles that are like the bubbling fluidized bed that actually cover most of the diameter of the of the column, and you have particles that are actually uh, flowing downwards in the um, near the wall. Uh, it's observed also for gas liquid systems and uh, for particles that are easy to be fluidized, and it uh, has a fluidization frequency of one hertz. Another one that I'm uh, interested in this presentation is the square nose slugging. And this is actually the one that I'm showing here in the, on the uh, right. Uh, and you, you can see that the, the, the plugs of uh, gas and solid are actually covering the entire cross-section of, uh, of, the, uh, of the column. Uh, you have um, these plugs that are moving, and then finally when they reach the top of the bed, they collapse. While they're moving, you have also the particles raining down from the bottom of the plug into the, uh, the, the, the section on, uh, below them. Uh, it happens for cohesive particles of angular shape, columns with a smooth wall. Uh, and w something very interesting is that these uh, plugs that are formed are similar to the experiments that are done for an angle of internal friction. You know, when you put solids inside the tube at a certain mass, you cannot move them even if, uh, as, as hard as you can push. And the same thing is happening here. So these plugs cannot move, so it makes pressure build up in this, uh, these slugs, and therefore you have particles that rain down that can actually let the, solid, uh, the gas move inside. 
Uh, you have a lot of pressure fluctuations in the system, and this, both of them are called slugging, but there is really different hydrodynamic regime between the two. And you can also see that the, also the frequency of the, of the bubbling is different between the two. Uh, so the criteria I just showed to you do not provide the type of slugging that we will have. You know that slug is the necessary condition, but not sufficient. We do not know what's happening. So the question we asked were, and this is actually of, of interest, it's not something that uh, only we wanted to test, is our, do commercial CFD codes can predict the hydrodynamics? And this is really important because we're working on a chemical looping combustion 3 megawatt pilot plant, and that's actually the... the uh, that uses Gildor B particles, and uh, the thing is that at that uh, scale, we know that uh, slugging can happen, and uh, we want to have a, um, a size that actually can be represented if we do without any slugging. So, the first thing that you do, you use CFT in order to see if it's slugging or not. So, what we have done here is we did some experimentation uh, in a one t 10 centimeters diameter uh, column. Uh, with manganese oxide, this is the uh, oxygen carrier for, the, for the one of the applications of chemical looping, and this is the, the Gilder B particles with these uh, physical properties, and um, uh, a superficial gas velocity of 25, uh, 0.25 meters per second. So what we were observing is actually the square nose slugging was happening. You can see these big slugs in the system uh, that we were showing, and also here I'm showing the bed level fluctuations in the, in, the, in the unit. So this is a very small one, but it's a very good uh, experimentation to see if the CFD actually is going to, to capture this, uh, um, these hydrodynamic features. So here I'm just showing, uh, oops. So what we were observing here, you can see the, the part, uh, the, the bed level actually, how it, it fluctuates in the system, and also the, uh, the, the plugs going on. Uh, the, the, the slugs going on, and uh, I'm not sure if this is completely uh, uh, seen, but uh, we were observing this, and so many times we had to actually stop the unit because, uh, you know, for safety reasons, uh, when the pressure builds up more than the column uh, uh, capability, we had to stop it. So that was what's about happening. So we said, okay, let's see what, what, what will happen if we can capture this, and if then we can use the CFT for the, for the pilot <coughs> scale um, uh, design. So the CFT approaches, I'm not going to give a lot of details here, just to show that from the DNS and DEM that, uh, of course, they can uh, capture the particle-particle collisions and uh, what, what happens with them. We are interested mostly on this, uh, this scale because there's no limit in the particle, uh, uh, number of particles, and of course, it's of interest for a commercial scale because finally the goal that we, we have at uh, our company and most of the companies is the technology development at a uh, commercial scale. So that's why we, we, come, uh, we started uh, simulating at this scale. Uh, just about what we have in the here, so for the Eulerian, Eulerian, see, uh, since I'm going to show also some results of the fluent, so just wanted to give a comparison between Barracuda and the fluent. Um, so here, uh, the solid stress tensor is similar to a fluid, so you have the, the viscosity, uh, and, and for the um, interactions between the two phases, well, you have a drag correlation. So that's for the, what is uh, for Eulerian, Eulerian approach. Uh, for, okay, uh, multi-phase particle in, uh, in cell as a barracuda, without giving a lot of information, because you guys are more expert than me on this. Um, so it's the discretization of the, the distribution function in parcels of different uh, mass, diameter, uh, position, and the velocity. And so what happens is um, uh, the, you have the Eulerian mesh, you uh, uh, interpolate the, the values of parcels into the, that mesh, and then you, you, you calculate the Lagrangian conditions based on the values there, and then new conditions at the time plus one is, uh, is done. So the advantages of this that we have is the particle size distribution is taken into account at a very low computational cost. And we have also access to interesting Lagrangian data such as cloud velocity, mass, position, and composition. So just to have a comparison of uh, what are the subgrid uh, models that we have in, uh, in Barracuda. Okay, so we have the drag model, of course similar to what we have in uh, Eulerian, Eulerian, and then we have the solid stress tensor. 
and the, the presentation before they were showing this, and w something that I wanted to highlight is that the, the solid tensor does not allow for off-diagonal components. Uh, it's more mostly the normal uh, components, and this is something to take into account, and uh, maybe the results that I will show is also related to this, uh, to this uh, feature. Okay, so what we have done here is uh, the for, uh, we use Barracuda. Uh, Benjamin, my friend, my, my colleague, he, he used Fluent with this um, uh, setup in the CFD simulations. For, uh, b b uh, for Fluent, we had the uh, uh, uniform injection of the gas. Barracuda, we used the, the feature of uh, injection on the bottom, and uh, we used exactly what we had in the experimentation that I just showed to you to, to have uh, the same. Uh, simulations and uh, what, what we have is that um, we, use, uh, we started with this drag law of GDESPO and uh, the first one was no slip uh, wall conditions. Okay, and so, so just some results. The first results that we had, um, so we had the, so here I'm just showing the experiments of the density of the bed, the average voidage, bed level and the uh, standard deviation of pressure fluctuations. Uh, we had the significant differences between br both uh, CFT codes and experiments. So we had um, uh, that the, the bed level was not captured, not neither the, the, the average voidage and also the, the pressure fluctuations. And something also that triggered us was that uh, both uh, Fluent and Barracuda were actually giving uh, similar level of the bed, but uh, in the same conditions, the delta P over H was not the same. And so is this actually, uh, for, from fluidization point of view, due to the uh, slugging? Because the slugging, sometimes you do not have constant delta P when, uh, when s for some uh, operating conditions. Or is something that is numerical? So the, that, that was also a question that we started asking uh, ourselves, and now we're working on it a little bit. Uh, so what we have to, we stopped the Fluent and we, uh, we started working only on Barracuda and the Fluent one is, uh, is undergoing actually. Um, so what we started working on is, um, so we, uh, for, 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 for instance, we did not work, uh, play a, lo a lot with the particle stress model as uh, has been done in the pre previous presentations. We just changed the parameters such as drag law particle wall uh, interaction and sphericity. And these are because they are, uh, in the theory of the slugging, there are actually some, uh, as I was showing, the, there are parameters that actually play which type of slugging we are getting. Um, and if not indicated, of course, the sphericity of 0 0.7 and tangent to wall momentum retention of 0 0.5 were um, considered. So here I'm just showing different, uh, different uh, drag models that we used. So starting from GDASPO, then we modified the VNNU with some correctional factor, EMMS. We modified also EMMF to be similar to how we modified uh, VNNU. We used Ganser non-spherical particles. And so for most of them, we were observing that the, the, the slugging behavior that we were observing is still square nose slugging. You, you, we did not see this bed fluctuations that we were observing for a square nose slugging. Some conditions, as um, these two here, we captured uh, the structures that are similar to square nose slugging, but mostly at the, uh, the top of the bed. So uh, at least at these ones that we decrease the, the I mean, we, we put free slip conditions at the wall, that's something that happens as square nose slugging. We were saying that there was some effect here. But of course, as a, as a comparison, I'm also showing fluent, but of course what was happening here is that we could not, we were not sat satisfied saying that, oh, we got the, the point that actually the, the simulations are actually getting the, the hydrodynamic of the uh, of the system, so, <coughs> so but there is something to be done here. But um, we we took the, those two uh, drag models and uh, wall conditions that we had, and uh, again we did a comparison. Here we had the bed level that was actually matching the uh, the experiments. Also the the, the voidage was fine, but uh, still the average uh, the standard deviation of pressure fluctuations the, the, there was a big difference between the experiments and the, and um, and the CFD. And again, I want to highlight this part. This is the pressure profile in the system. 
and uh, with different uh, drag laws. Um, again, the same thing here. Uh, we have almost the same bed height here, uh, but different pressure drops. Is it a slugging feature? Is it actually has something physical or is it a numerical issue? And uh, this is, I, th I think, something that we should uh, start thinking about in order to see what, how we can improve uh, Barracuda in order to, to capture some, uh, some parameters that are mostly for group B particles. Okay, so just going to the conclusions, of course, uh, I think the square nose the slugging is a valuable way to assess the capabilities of CFT codes in detecting particle-particle interactions. Um, we, we played around a little bit with, uh, with Barracuda drag laws and also free slip conditions, and we could qualitatively uh, capture square nose uh, structures. How cannot, however, we cannot say that uh, the either of the codes is able to predict this be behavior for now. Uh, Barracuda uh, shear cell forces that can result in particle locking are not in taken into account, so maybe th there is some work to be done here. The parameters that can affect the result of course, the drag, drag law wall uh, conditions and intraparticle interactions. And the, the question is how can we improve this because this is real of, uh, really of interest when we are working especially with group B particles. So I would like to thank you very much for this uh, opportunity and I'm happy to have uh, questions. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Senna. Yeah, we, we should take time for one or two questions on this one. I think uh, what I appreciate about this is a lot of our mainstream applications are group A and, and B that avoid slugging. As you go to larger particle sizes, this comes in, certainly you're able to capture the slugs developing, but uh, some other aspects. Um, it's interesting, with, with any CFD tool, there's a mix of fundamentals and empirical models, and I think the one that's gotten to the attention over the over the recent years has been drag, but as we're seeing, there's other empirical models, such as the stress model, that are important. So yeah. uh, we're seeing this as the start of a dialogue where we'll continue to Absolute. yes. work on this. So go ahead. <coughs> Ollie so. has a question. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kuchen has one. Um, well, maybe some other people, too. Yeah. So um, OK. Did you do Barracuda without the injection points and just um, just a flow boundary condition? Oh, no. Like you did in, in, in Fluent. For Fluent, you mean? No, 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 for Barracuda. Oh, for so for Fluent, you, yeah, you can't do the injection uniform, point. But, yeah. but no, for Barracuda, we, we use only the injection points uh, for the, as a boundary condition because uh, based on some work that also BSPSRI was doing, we were having better uh, agreement with the, with the results. So we didn't play on that one, actually. Yeah, but for the, for the purpose of um, comparing the two models, mm -hmm. Don't you think like the the formation of smaller bubbles at the bottom um, due to the injection points would make a difference? Absolutely, I think I, I think there there is also something uh, some something to see on that. But uh, in terms of the if we can get the square nose slugging with that or the, the other one, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Okay, I think. Uh, I can, I can give you some of my experience, yes. okay? I discovered that Barracuda can do slugging a small scale, a small scale by accident. So I just skew the particle size distribution. I give it lots of fines. It does it. But I don't know how accurate are they. Okay. You can try so it. You, you, the, the, you just put fines in the system? Or so I put more fines in it. Okay. Instead of, so, so you have measured particle size distribution, right? Yes. So instead of just putting in the particle size division, you're putting more fines. Okay. Mm. And it will get you the slugging. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's okay. interesting. <laughs> That's and then, stuff. yeah, go ahead. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I just have a, a quick question. You said that in one of your slides that you had a no slip condition, and then afterwards you said that you had a, a, a partial slip condition with the tangential. Uh, yes coefficients of restitution. So the no-slip, is that referred to the fluid or? The no-slip one is the, the very first uh, comparison that we did. So there oh. you have a, a, a zero tangential coefficient of restitution. Yes. So okay. th th this, these two were actually the, both of them were no-slip. The very first that one that they did. And then once we started playing for, with Barracuda, 
we started changing also the wall conditions as well. Okay. Yeah. And the, the EMMS model that you're using, is that just the, the Yang out of the box one or did you use a matrix one? Uh, for EMMS? Yeah. Yeah, uh, which one do you say? Uh, which one are you using? Oh, the, 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 the default one. Yeah, uh, the, the one that we're okay. using. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks. Avinash, I, I think, Ali, let's do one more. This is an, a lively dialogue, so let's do one more with Avinash and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up here. Yes, n a nice uh, presentation. On the, in the cases where uh, the pressure drop was differently predicted by the, by the different software, did you check whether the bed mass was correctly, uh, because you, I presume you had a fixed inventory in the experiment, yes. did, was the bed mass matched better by one or the other? Well, the, 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 the initial bed mass, uh, I'm not, uh, on. the initial bed mass that we put inside the system, this is this, it was the same, and the, all the okay. particles that were, uh, were going out, we just re input it inside the unit. So, yeah, so that was the thing. The bed mass was the same, but the pressure of the drop was not. Uh, so, that's something to. Yeah, because that's something we have seen as, okay. as well. So. so, we should figure out what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's thank our speaker okay, thank one you more very time. Much.